Hallelujah. He's a good, good father. Thank you, Lord. So, God, we just want to thank you for your goodness and love today. We gather around your word. May it be a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Speak to our hearts. Thank you for those who have been ministered to today. We give you all the glory, and we believe for continued testimonies of healings and the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Will you take your Bibles and turn with me to John chapter 1? You have been standing a long time. Thank you. We're just about going to let you be seated. And uh, that'll be good. That'll be good. John chapter 1. I just want to say what a privilege to have our former pastor's wife here, Gabby, bless you. Will you just show your appreciation to her for being here and her family? Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. John chapter 1. What I like to do at communion, I will do that. I find if I do what I'm told, things go well. So we're going to dismiss the children at this time. Bless you, children. Thank you for being with us today. John chapter 1, beginning at verse 10. He was in the world, and th though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did not receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. One of the things that we like to do at communion is to share a doctrine of the faith. And so this morning we're going to share the doctrine of adoption. Can I invite you to do one more thing before we're, we get into the word? Can we just stand together for a moment of silence as we remember those who have paid, a, if you're able, uh, we're just so thankful for those who have gone before us and the freedom that we enjoy. Let's just pause for a moment. So, Lord, thank you for the freedom in Canada. We pray for our prime minister, our leaders today. Speak to their hearts. May their lives be built, and may our country continue to be built upon your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I think it's appropriate before you're seated, turn to the person next to you, look them in the eye, and say, I'm thankful for freedom. Will you do that? Then you may be seated. So I don't know how your week went. I'm going to tell you about mine. So first of all, somebody hacked my credit card. And that wasn't so bad. It was the three times I was trying to get through to one of the companies 
that I have an automatic payment taken out of. So the actual transaction would likely take five minutes. Three different times, I kept track of the time. It took me two hours and 45 minutes after waiting and waiting and waiting to finally get through. And so we got that changed. I started to listen to my own sermons about the importance of being influenced from the inside out, not the outside in. It was a fruit test. So then what happened was our dryer died. And when you stop and think, it's been eight years, so I guess it did okay. But you're never ready for that expense. And so we finally worked out, and the dryer was going to come. And after about 10 days of no laundry, things were tense in our house. And as you get older, it takes very little to throw you off. I, I guess you become inflexible, like your bones and all the aches. I don't know. It's just like it was a frustration. So the, the fellows came and set up the, the washer and the dryer because I figured we might as well buy the new dryer, the new washing machine, because it's eight-year-old, it, and it's just going to die the next day after they leave. So we, we bought both. So they left, and my wife was all excited with the nine buckets of laundry that we have, or how many they were. And we did the washing and then went to put the clothes in the dryer, and the new dryer, $862, whatever it was, didn't work. <laughs> so now, life gets really interesting. So we have two options, send the machine back and get a new one, or have the Whirlpool fellow to come and find out what's going on. I'm pretty curious. I want to figure out why it's not going, it's not working. So I got a hold of Whirlpool, and he'll be here Friday. I get nervous when people come on a Friday because they're there, but they're not there. They want to start their weekend. And so I got a phone call at 8 o'clock. He was supposed to come in the morning. We had all our plans for the afternoon because that's what old people do. They plan. And he, he called me and said, I can't come till the afternoon. Well, that's kind of frustrating because we have our day all planned, but we won't be here, but we'll change our plans. Okay, so he's going to come. And so I called him at 2 o'clock because we really want this dryer after now almost two weeks. Yes, I'll be there. Don't worry. So, 2 o'clock came and went, 3 o'clock came and went, and I turned to my wife and I said, he's not coming. It's Friday afternoon. He's going to have a little longer weekend. So I called Whirlpool. I called the fellow that, anyway, long story short, he was a wonderful gentleman, and he came, checked out the dryer. I'm holding my breath he went to check the fuse. And we have an old fuse box. Took the fuses out, tested them, the fuses are fine. Put it back in, and he went like that and pushed the fuses in, and the dryer worked. It was a fruit test. And life is a fruit test often, and our testimony and our song depends on whether we pass the test or not. 
One of the things that I want to emphasize to you this morning is that you are part of the family of God and in the legal, the the godly, legal, biblical understanding, you are not on the outside, you are on the inside and you're part of the family of God And God is with you no matter if you're going through sickness or you're going through a challenging week. As he said, I'll never leave you and never forsake you. And so I want to draw your attention to this doctrine. Because sometimes we're in the church and we, we understand we have doctrines, but we've never taken time to really look at them. So let's look at this doctrine of adoption. It's one of my favorites and, and the Bible says that the, the, the definition of, of adoption is the act of God whereby he makes us members of his family. And we all kind of know that, but can I take you deeper this morning so we have a biblical understanding of that? This is a privilege that's distinct from justification and regeneration. These are all doctrines as well. God could have, watch this, God could have forgiven us our sins, given us legal right standing, which is justification. Justification is when we accept Christ, and as we partook of the emblems today, it becomes just as if I'd never sinned. That's justification. So he could have forgiven our sins and given us legal right standing without making us his children. So he could have said, you are, you are free from sin. But he didn't stop there. Watch this. He makes you part of the family as well. Is that bonus? It's bonus. It's an incredible truth. He could have made us alive, which is regeneration. You see, when we accept Christ, our spirit is dead, and Jesus comes into our life, and our life comes alive. That's, that's the regeneration. He could have made us alive in regeneration without making us his children. But adoption focuses on the personal intimacy we have with the Father as a result of salvation. Our text today, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You no longer have to be on the outside looking in, but you're now on the inside looking out. When we study this scripture, we understand, but as many as received him, do they... To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Let's look at this word power. Exousia. The ability, the privilege, the capacity, the capacity, the delegated influence. It, it talks of strength and authority. Folks, this is not a weak transformation being part of the family of God. This is a privilege. It's a delegated influence. And you, as a child of God, have strength and authority. Sometimes we back up when the enemy comes and challenges us. Sometimes we give in. But I'm telling you, when you consider the doctrine of adoption, when you give your heart to Jesus, he comes in authority and power, and it's yours, and it's at your disposal. That's what it is to be part of the family of God. I I like this word, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. In the original uh, genome, it means to, to cause to be, to generate, to come into being, to grow. And, and I want to suggest, as I've been saying several times, as we've shared together, God is causing us to grow, to become his sons and daughters. That's the power. When we look at a holy God and we look at the family of God and, and, and we're called to holiness it, we sometimes it's overwhelming, and, and often the enemy will say, I, I'm unworthy. I'm here to tell you that God makes you worthy, and he gives you the power to become a child of God. 
As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. When you look at this word become, you, you, you go a little deeper. And it actually means to be published. This power is tied to the word to be published. So when some, someone publishes a document, puts, this, puts his name on it, they are saying, this is credible. You see, it's been published in the kingdom of God that you are a child of the king. And one of the reasons that it's published is that so the enemy can look at it and when you say, Satan, you need to get behind me, you're under my heel, he needs to be drawn to the written word that you are, it's been published that you are a child of God. It's not just your words, it's just not some debate that you have to get into with the enemy. I'm here to tell you, you're, you've accepted Christ, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and you need to declare, it is published that I'm a child of the King. I belong to him. When that accusation comes and those, those drier days happen in your life, just remind yourself, I'm a part of the family of God. I've been adopted. <laughs> I've got the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not a power that comes from your soul, your mind, will, and emotion. It's a power that comes from your spirit. And so when you spend time feeding your spirit every day, when, that, when those tough things come at, at the end of the week and you've had a challenging week, what's amazing, when all the dust settles, your wife still likes you. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, it's been published. It's written down. The enemy needs to know. This is not a debate I need to get into. It's already settled. Because as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. This is a journey. The problem with it, the, the reason we don't become like Jesus is we're not on the journey. There's a becoming that's involved in becoming sons and daughters. John said it well, I must decrease so that he might increase. Yeah. And, and you so and you you know you see, well, well, I, I've got to do more and I've got to be more. No, no, you need to learn what it is to to, to embrace humility, because there's power in humility. Because when we are humble ourselves before God, the spirit grows and the soul diminishes, and we hear the voice of God. We have three children. We have ten grandchildren. One of our sons, Kevin, is an executive pastor in, in a London church. And they have three teenagers. So I was golfing recently with all my grandchildren. That was a highlight of the year for me mainly because I beat them. <laughs> Felt so good. But we went to go to the golf course, and what's amazing is all three of them are driving. So you have this picture of Mackay, you know, just this little guy, and he's got dad's keys, and he's driving, and I'm sitting in the front praying, because it's so, it's such a stretch. So they have three children, and they have two children that they were fostering and they adopted. So now they have five children. They also have three dogs. One of the dogs is a Great Dane. Chaos. But they have a picture of Caroline and Ava. They all had t shirts. 
the day they became legally adopted, they found their forever home. And these little girls have been through a great deal, and Kevin and Kylie just, the home is chaos, but there's, in the midst of it all, there's peace. It's, it's what an amazing thing. You know, sometimes as Christians, we're like the prodigal, we're in the home, but we don't have relationship with the Father. Some of us don't realize there's a forever home that he wants us to be a part of. You see, when you really understand adoption, love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, long-suffering, self-control becomes very, very real because we are being more influenced by Father God than parents, culture, and generation. Many Christians are more influenced because of parents, culture, and generations than Father God. And our soul overwhelms our spirit. But when you understand this doctrine, and you see, that day the judge signed the document that Caroline and Ava were now part of Kevin and Kylie Norcross's home. I want you to embrace the truth that you have been adopted into the family of God. Listen to the scriptures. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not yet been made known. For we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. There's something to look forward to. This world is not what it's all about. I'm telling you that the the grave is empty. And one day the trumpet is going to sound. The dead in Christ are going to arise. And we're going to meet him in the air. And we will be like him. That's the hope of being adopted. That's the hope of being embraced by a loving Heavenly Father. I love Romans 8, because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear. You've received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit. We are God's children, and if we are children, we are heirs, heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ. And indeed, we share in his sufferings in order that we all may also share in his glory. Oh, there's coming a day. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. Those who do not believe in Christ are not children of God, but are children of wrath and sons of disobedience. So that's the foundation of adoption. Let's look at the family of adoption. And when we consider what the Bible teaches us. As we have just read, we are, we are uh, led by the Spirit of God. And we receive a spirit that makes you not a slave to fear, but the spirit of sonship. And so here's the thing. You don't have to like somebody in the body of Christ, but you do have to love them. See the difference? There are some people, let's be honest, you really don't like. When their name comes up on the phone, uh, not today, no, not today. But when it's all said and done, we have to love one another. That's a whole other sermon for another day. But when we consider this, as partakers of God's family, we are children of the promise. Listen, nor because they are his descendants, Romans 9, 
Are they all Abraham's children? On the contrary, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. In other words, it's not the natural children who are God's children. It is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. And then Galatians says this, Now you brothers, like Isaac, are children of promise. Do you know when you understand adoption and you truly give your heart to Father God and understand sonship and daughtership, you understand that you are part of Abraham's offspring and Abraham's offspring get a blessing, you can expect a blessing from God. Come on. Come on. There are, when we are all in and we receive Christ into our life and we give everything to God, make him number one. You understand you're part of the family. We can expect blessing. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus cried out, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And Abba, in the aromatic words, express an intimate family relationship, a, a word used by a completely trusting and dependent God who is fully secure in the, loving, the uh, loving arms of a father. And it actually means dearest father. We saying you're a good, good father. And you can reflect this morning on your yesterdays and how you felt people have, have let you down and hurt you and disappointments and failures. But folks, I'm here to tell you we often see through a glass darkly and we don't understand it all. There comes a point, understanding adoption, understanding family, you say, Father, I don't understand, but I choose to trust you today because I want everything you have for me. Trust always involves the unanswered question. Do not let an unanswered question keep you from intimacy with the Father. Because I can't figure it out, I question God. And the moment I question God, he, it keeps me derailed on my journey. I want to become, I want to become a child of God. I want to be growing. I want to be on the journey. The foundation, the family, the famine, and our time is almost gone. I even forgot the announcements and offerings. Do you know how many points you lose <laughs> from the deacon board when you forget the offer? So we're going to work it in in the end. My apologies. That's a problem when you have too much fun at church. You just kind of forget the structure and you just... The famine... I love this. It says that for as many as received him, King James says he gave the right. He gave the power or he gave the right to become a son. Some of us feel, well, I, I'm unworthy. I don't. Have the right. God says, I've given you the right. The fact that you feel unworthy is a, is a lie from the enemy. You need to know the truth. Let the truth set you free. So spiritually, when we talk about famine, many of us feel, many of us feel we are spiritually orphans. Our rebellious and sinful nature cut us off from God the Father. And that is why we need to go through an adoption process. The, the price of adoption 
as we partook of, of communion was the death of Christ. The, pr the price has been paid, and he's ready to sign the document if you'll just accept him. <laughs> Don't be like the prodigal son in the house, but never having a relationship with the father. Emotionally, many of us have grown up with a fathering deficit. I love what it, Mark 1 and 11 says where Jesus was bat, being baptized. I refer to this often because I love it so much. It's a, it's a little window into the intimacy between the father and the son. And, and, and the father says, as Jesus was baptized, this is my son whom I love and in whom I am well pleased. And he didn't just say, well, this is my son. No, no, he said, this is my boy. Whom I love and whom I am well pleased. And I'm here to tell you today, if you didn't receive those words of affirmation from an earthly father, it will often cause a fathering deficit. And there are 50 and 60 and 70-year-old people who are driven and still trying to get the affirmation of a father. And what happens when we chase money and we chase relationships and we chase affirmation, it's like a lust It's never satisfied because there is only one place that you can get the affirmation you need, and that's from a father and from a mother. God's design. The father said, this is my boy, whom I love, and in whom I am well pleased. And every one of us sitting in this room need to hear that from an earthly father. But here's the point. If you didn't hear it, there's a heavenly father that stands ready to speak it into your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a deficit of identity in people's lives today. It simply comes from a lack of leadership. We need to raise up men and women who know God and who will lead their home. It is not up to the government or the school system to raise your son and daughter. It's up to you, mom and dad, and the church of Jesus Christ as we partner together. But you got to know you're adopted. Don't let yesterday dictate your today. I'm a part of the family of God. There are these are three expressions of love we all need to hear. So as adopted children, we can enjoy the same favor that Jesus has with the Father. We too are the apple of God's eye, the pleasure of his love, the delight of his focus. The Father is passionate for you to love him. The Father is passionate for you to spend time with him. He's not impressed with your outward religious exercises. But oh, he's anxious, anxious for you to give him your heart. That's the one thing he wants. You say, where's my heart? The Bible says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Find your treasure, you'll find your heart. Final point, future. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, Romans 8, 17, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. I have a declaration. I, I, I want to I share this with you. It's very, really exciting. You have been included in the will along with Jesus. Mm. We have been included in his inheritance. 
We are heirs of God. I, be, I God, bequeath myself to you for all eternity. We are co-heirs with Christ. We get in on all that Jesus inherits. Worship team, come if you will. We will have a family to spend eternity with. We will enjoy a life free of pain and disease and death. John 17 says, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Oh, Jesus is so excited about you understanding that together you're part of the family. I was sitting in with the intercessors this morning as they were praying for the service. And I had a thought. The prodigal son wasn't patient for his inheritance. So he asked for it early, which was very contrary to Jewish law. And of course, we all know the story of how he repented and he was brought back into the family. But I was reminded this morning, as awesome as this is, <coughs> excuse me, that one day we will be part of this inheritance. You can also get part of your inheritance early. If you start to play that, they'll think I'm finishing. <laughs> That'll be good. Which I am. I'm sorry. As much as we are heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ, so much to look forward to. Hasn't even entered our mind what heaven's going to be like. Hawaii, Naples, Florida, not even close. But here's what I want to leave you with today. There's also blessings that you can get early because you're adopted. Come on. How many have experienced the blessings of the Lord? You've served the Lord Years and years and years, and you can look back and say, like David, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. The love of the Father is that, okay, I've got all this for you, but I want to give you a little early. So when you have a drier day, You just lift up your heart to say to the Lord, he's still in control. I'm still part of the family. This is one of the doctrines that we believe in as a church. So our takeaway is this. When we truly receive adoption and we allow him to make us part of his family, Inviting him to feed our famine, we begin to believe we have a future and we have an inheritance. So if you don't quite have the car paid for or the mortgage paid for, I want you to know God went to prepare a place for you and it's all paid for. That's what we have. To look forward to. Will you stand with me together? You've been so attentive. Thank you so much. There's a song. That I've asked the worship team. And I've been singing it all week. I'm glad you weren't there because I can't sing. But it was in my spirit. And... We're going to sing it in a moment. It's who you say that I am. You know, it doesn't matter who other people say you are. It's who God says you are and who you believe that you are. Just bow your heads with me for a moment. 
going to ask you to respond to this word just by lifting your hand. And we won't belabor the service, but this has been in my spirit all week long. You're here and heads are bowed and eyes are closed and you say, Pastor, I needed this word this morning. I needed to be reminded that my name has been published. The Bible says our name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Maybe you've had a challenging week as well, but God has just spoken into your spirit. And there's a refreshing going on in your heart right now where you're reminded you are part of the family of God. And by raising your hand today, you say, that, that's just kind of the word I needed to hear. And it's, it's an encouragement to me. Can I see your hand? You're just reminded this morning. Just go ahead. Just go ahead. Yeah. Now, this is what we're going to do. And we, we won't take a lot of time because somebody forgot the announcements. And we, and we got to work it all in. But, but I'm going to let you go shortly. But this is, this is what I want you to do, folks. This is the picture I had. As we sing this song, if that continues to become real, I just want you to slip out of your seat and come and just stand around this altar and just say, Lord, I'm thankful that I'm part of the family of God. I'm thankful that my name is written down. I believe the words of this song are going to penetrate your spirit. I believe the words of this song are going to, if you'll open up your heart, it's going to do something in your spirit. So if if you're thankful, just as this song ministers to your spirit, I just want to open these altars. We won't take a lot of time, but we're just going to say, Lord, I'm thankful that this is part of the doctrine of what I believe in. Let's sing it together. Let's lift our hands together, shall we? The altars are open if you want to just come and thank him as you understand who 